Hello again. As you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy over here for EverymanIT.com. Today's class is Linux backup using tar and cron jobs. So in the Linux world, uh, the, 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 the ubiquitous backup piece of backup software that almost everybody uses is something called tar. Tar allows you to very easily, quickly, simply, etc. backup files, folders, or your entire system. So we'll show you how to use tar in order to back up your files, folders, or entire system. Then cron jobs. Cron allows you to schedule tasks. So the reason I, I, I put these two subjects together is you will learn how to back up uh, your system and then you will learn how to schedule an automatic backup of your system. So with, with cron uh, jobs, this allows you to schedule tasks you know, every hour, every minute, every every week, every month, every year, etc. Uh, and basically when these tasks trigger, it'll go through and you use cron in order to do that. So this class will be uh, teaching you how to back up your system using tar and it'll teach you how to schedule tasks using cron jobs. Uh, give me a second and we'll dive into this class. So backing up files using tar really is dirt simple. You know, as long as you know what's going on, uh, you just type out a little command and it happens. Uh, if you if you if you have a small directory that you're backing up, it will li literally happen in the blink of an eye. If you have a large directory that you're black backing up, well, it, it'll take a little bit of time, but it's it's really really easy. So the first thing that you have to type into the command line is of course sudo. Super user do you always 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 do this. Um, especially in Edit and Button 2. Then you have space and then you put in lowercase t-a-r because the program tar is called tar. After you put in tar you have to do a space and then you have to feed tar a number of arguments. If you don't feed tar arguments um, nothing's gonna work right. So you do space and then you do hyphen. After this hyphen is, is where you plug in your arguments. There's normally, uh, what is it, like four or five arguments that you almost always put in. The first argument that you put in is lowercase c. Lowercase c tells tar to either create or overwrite a backup file. So if you don't put c in, this can be a very bad thing. Basically all this says is create the backup file. The next thing, next argument you put in is a lowercase v. The lowercase v stands for verbose. This means that the, the Linux server will tell you what's going on during the backup process. So basically it'll say, you know, copying this file, copying this file, copying this file, copying this directory, copying this directory. So as the, 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 the tar process is happening, you'll get a constant stream of what's going on. This v it's up to you whether or not you want to see it. You know, especially uh, when you're new, you may be less confident about, confident about Linux and so you want to see what's going on. Somebody who's used Linux for a while probably doesn't care. All this V does is it gives you a stream of information about what's happening while the process is going on. Otherwise, if you don't put V in there, uh, you basically just get a blinking cursor until it's done. It doesn't really matter. Uh, the next thing is lowercase p. This is one that can be very important. Lowercase p stands for preserving permissions. So in one of our other classes, we talked about creating all these permissions, you know, 777, 775, 757, whatever. If you don't put p here, tar will not preserve those permissions. So if you're doing a backup for, let's say, your server, you're doing a backup for your web server, and you don't put P in here, tar will rip out those permissions. And so if you have to do a recovery of your web server, you're going to have to go back in and reset all of your permissions. And that can just be a horrible waste of time. So I would say almost always, unless you have a reason, always put P in. The next thing is Z. Z, lowercase z, stands for compression. So this will tell uh, tar that once it's created a tar file of all these backup files, then to compress the file further. So this is something called a tar ball. So initially, tar creates a single backup file from all your files and folders. Then with the z command, it will try to shrink and compress that single file down to be as small as possible. Again, you know, it takes you half a second to, to type in the command, so I would say you should always, always, always compress. This is not the Windows world where there, something wonky might happen if you compress it. It works. You know, you, you compress it, you uncompress it, you compress it, you uncompress it. 
I don't think it fails. It almost never fails. So there's no there's no drawback to compressing. This isn't Windows where you're like, oh, well, if I compress it, maybe something will get corrupted and then it'll all go to hell. Nah, just, just always compress unless you genuinely have a reason uh, not to compress. And then finally, uh, you have lowercase f. What lowercase f allows you to do is it allows you to give tar a file name to to create and back all this up too. So you always put in F. If you don't put in F, it's, it's just a pain in the butt. So basically sudo space tar space your arguments. C creates or overwrites the file. You need that. V verbose just tells you what's going on. Eh, I'd skip it, but it's up to you. P lowercase p preserves permissions. Again, I would keep that. Lowercase z compresses the file. Again, this is not the Windows world. You don't have to worry about something weird happening. Always compress unless you really don't need to for some reason. And then finally, f, this allows you to give uh, tar a file name of what you are backing uh, this, this file up as. If you don't put an f, again, nothing goes well. So out of all these, the only thing that, that I would skip is the v argument, just because I trust Linux, so there's no reason to, to see the verbose. So after the F, you then put in the file name uh, that you want this thing backed up as. So you do backup. So it'll create the backup file as backup. But uh, the, the, the standards that everybody uses past this is you then put period and then you say tar, T-A-R, to say this is a tar backup. Then, since you've compressed it, to say that this is a tar ball, you then put another period and then do GZ. Now, as I've said in the other classes, file associations don't mean anything in Linux. It's not like in the Windows world where if you have a .img file, that actually means something to the computer. Linux, the operating system, doesn't care about .tar or .gz. It just doesn't care about it. Why this is important is so that you remember what the hell this thing is. So, I mean, you could, you could create a backup file named uh, Bob if you really wanted to, but the question is, is in two months when you go back to it, would you remember uh, what Bob means? By simply calling it backup.tar.gz, you can say, this is my backup file, it's a tar, and it's compressed, so this is my backup file, tarball basically makes uh, life uh, pretty easily. Now, past that, you would then do space, and this is where you can exclude uh, the folders that you don't want to be backed up into this tarball. Now, this is really important. Remember when, uh, when I was talking about mount points before, and I said whenever you create mount points, you should always create the mount point in the MNT directory, so, so root MNT. The reason is, is because now you can exclude that mount directory and you don't have to worry about backing up your CD drives, your external hard drives, etc. You can just do an exclude command and make sure that that doesn't get backed up. Now all you do uh, to do the exclude command is you do, so you have space after the backup name, space, then you have two hyphens, then you say exclude, then you do equals, and then whatever uh, directory it is that you don't want backed up. So here you do hyphen hyphen exclude equals root mount is what you don't want backed up. Um, this is recursive, so you, so you don't have to, to put in other stuff. If you just put in mount, that should be fine. Then finally, you say what you want backed up. So since we're, we're backing up the entire system, let's say, we will say we want to back up root. So this will back up root and it will exclude uh, the mount directory. Uh, now, if, if you wanted to back up, let's say, just your www uh, folder, let's say you know, you're just backing up your website, you could do uh, var www and that would back up uh, just your website. It's really that easy. Now, the big thing is, with this exclude here, is you have to be careful because if you make any mistakes with this exclude command, it will just include everything. Remember, Linux does not try to think for you. It does exactly what you tell it to do. So if you tell it to exclude a folder that doesn't actually exist because you, you messed up the directory path, um, 
th then it will just back up everything for you. This is one of those things that you've got to kind of play with, with the exclude command. Just understand Linux is very, very, very specific with this. And uh, if you don't get this right, like I say, it just, just won't exclude anything. So, so with that, uh, let's go to the computer. Like I say, I'll, I'll, I'll do a backup. I'll show you how this works. This really, really is dirt simple. Just remember sudo space tar space arguments. And again, out of these arguments, the only thing, the only one that I would say that, that you may not want to do is the verbose because that's just telling you what's going on. Then you do space. Then you do what the backup file is supposed to be called. You could call it Bob for all Linux cares. I would suggest you call it backup.tar, to say it's a tar file, dot gc, gz, to say that it's a tar ball. So it's a compressed uh, tar file. Then if you want to exclude folders, you do space hyphen hyphen exclude equals and then whatever the folder path is that you want to exclude. Then you do space and then you say what it is you want to back up. So in this we're saying we want to back up root. So this means the entire computer. Like I say, if we just wanted to back up the www folder, we would do uh, slash var slash www and that would only back up the www folder. It's really easy. So let's go over to the computer and I'll show you how this works. So now it's done, you know, to, to back up the www folder. Eh, it took about two or two or three minutes total. Now, uh, what we can do to make sure that it's actually there is we can do the ls space hyphen l, and we can see that there is that www backup dot tar dot gz uh, folder. Uh, or, or tarball all the way at the end of the directory listings. So that is all you have to do uh, in order to create a tarball. Since we've gone over that, let's go back out to the real world and I'll explain how to recover files from a tarball. So here we are, back at the Ubuntu server. Uh, the first thing that I want to do is I want to make sure I know where I'm at in the directory uh, structure. So I will change directory back to root. So cd space root. So this makes sure that I'm in the root directory. Now, uh, you just type in sudo, super user do, space, tar, space, the arguments. So hyphen C for create a file, V for verbose, P for preserve permission, Z for, uh, for compress, F for, hey, here's a file name. Basically, you have to have this F here in order to be able to feed tar a file name. So the file name we want to give it is www backup. So this will be the file name of this backup file. It tells me what it is. Oh, that's a www backup. Then dot tar. This tells me it's a tar file dot gz. This tells me it is something called a tar ball. So again, the full name of this file will be www backup dot tar dot gz. Again, remember that that dot tar dot gz means nothing to the computer. This is all for your own good. Past that, uh, we can then put in uh, directories to exclude. So imagine that this web server is like my own uh, web server for every man IT. You know, we have a lot of files that we want to back up, but we have one video folder that has 30 or 40 gigs of video files that we don't want to back up every time we do a backup. There's just no point. There's one central backup of it. That's all we need to worry about. So we want to exclude uh, that folder so that we just we don't back up, you know, 40 gigs unnecessarily. So to back up, you do the space hyphen hyphen exclude. Then it does equals. Then you just type in the path for what you want to back. Uh, want you what you want, want you want to exclude. So it's var www video. So you know whatever. Whatever path you're dealing with, that's that's what you put in there. And then you feed it what path you want to back up. So we want to back up the www folder, which is in the far folder. So there we go. So it's sudo tar hyphen cvpzf. File name will be www.backup.tar.gz. Exclude the video folder and back up the forward slash var forward slash www. And then you hit enter. Now, since I put that V in there for verbose, we are now going to see all the things uh, that it, that's copying into the tar file. So they'll all go streaming past. So as you see, the WP admin uh, folder there, you know, I set up a little WordPress site uh, on this particular web server. So, so that's what you're seeing, the WP includes, etc. So, see, 
it's that easy to create a, a tarball, so a backup of your system. You know, this isn't the, the horrible, evil Windows world where, where backups are big, mean, and scary. So now that you do have this this, this backup tarball, um, now how do you recover it? You know, if, if, if your com computer crashes, etc., uh, what do you do? Again, it is just as simple to recover a tarball as it is to create one. First thing, the command you do, of course, is the sudo command. And of course, you do tar. So sudo uh, space tar. After that, you again have to feed it uh, some arguments. Now here, the argument you're going to feed it first is x, lowercase x. That means extract. So basically what you're saying is we need to extract information from a tarball. Then you can put in v if you want. Again, this is verbose. It's up to you. Then p, lowercase p. Again, this is for permissions so that it preserves the permissions because especially if you're recovering the entire computer or you're recovering your www uh, folder, you want to preserve these permissions. Then z, this states to uncompress. So you have a you have a tar file that's compressed. This is saying uncompress uh, the tar file. Then you do f, and this again says, "Hey, I'm going to give you a file name." Again, out of all of these, the only one that I might not use is verbose. Or also, if you're dealing with a simple tar file and not a tar ball, so a tar file is where the tar program backs up everything and just puts it into a single file. A tar ball is where it puts it into a single file and then compresses it further. Well, if you didn't do the compression or your buddy didn't do the compression for some reason, then you may not put this Z in because it may not be a compressed file. After this, you tell it uh, what file you're, you're, you want to recover from. So you do, you know, backup uh, dot tar Dot gz. You know, this will be whatever the tarball name is at this point because remember you're extracting from. The next thing, you put space and then you put hyphen and then you put uppercase c. Uppercase c tells tar to change to a different directory. So you're in one directory and you're saying, I, when, I, when I recover, I want to recover this uh, to a different directory. So what I would suggest, you then create a, let's say, a recovery directory. So under root, you then do recover directory. So what will happen is it'll It'll uncompress the tarball, it'll take all the files and folders, and then it will plop those files and folders into the recover uh, directory. You want to be careful with this because depending upon what you're doing, again, you don't want to overwrite files uh, that you may need. So that, that can be a bad thing. Like I say, I would say recover back to something like a recover directory and then, then put things back as need be. But this is all you do to recover your files and folders uh, from a tarball. It is, it is a one-shot deal. You can't go in and pick out specific files and folders you want. You gotta, gotta you know, uh, bring out the entire tarball. But again, it's a pretty quick, easy, painful, pro painless process. So it's sudo space tar space hyphen lowercase x for extract, v, lowercase v for verbose, up to you, lowercase p for permissions, keep them intact, lowercase z uh, to uncompress, again, if you didn't compress the, the, the back of the tar file in the first place, then you don't want that, then f, just a stupid little argument you have to put in there to say you're going to give it a file name. Then you put in whatever tar ball you're talking about, so whatever it's called, you tell it, you do space, then you do hyphen uppercase C to say recover these files and folders to a specific directory, then you give it the directory. So like I say, I would create a directory called recover and then dump everything into there just to make sure you don't overwrite things uh, that, that you may actually need. So this is all you need to do to recover uh, files and folders. So let's go over to the computer and I'll, and I'll show you how it's done. So now all the files have uh, been recovered to the recovery directory. It took a minute or two. So uh, what we can do is we can do ls.l to make sure that the recovery direct recover directory exists. Then we can just change directory to recover. Then now in the recover directory, we can do another list command. And we see that the var folder is there. So we can change into the var 
lsl. We can see the www folder is there. Then we change into www folder. Then we do lsl again to list the contents. And we see here are all the contents of the www folder. So this shows you how you can back up using tar and how you can recover using tar. You know, now that you, you've, you've recovered this into the recover folder, you can go through here and you can copy and you can move a, as you please. Like I say, is if you, if you recover directly back to the target directory, you may overwrite files by accident. You know, there could just be a lot of problems by recovering to a special, you know, recover directory, you can make sure you don't overwrite things by accident. So with that, let's go back out to the real world and talk about cron jobs. So here we are back at the Ubuntu server. So we are now going to recover the files uh, that, that we, we, we backed up from the www folder. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to need to make sure that the, the backup uh, file is here. So we do ls l. And like I say, all the way that down at the bottom there, you can see www backup.tar.gz. So that is the tar file we are going to be recovering from. Now, uh, again, like I say, I would say a best practice is to create a recovery directory so that we can dump the stuff from that back, backup file into the recovery directory and we make sure we don't, don't do anything stupid. You know, anything wrong doesn't get overwritten. So we'll do sudo space mkdir space recover. It's a real simple, simple recovery directory. Enter. So that now created uh, the recovery directory. So... In order to extract the the files and folders from the, that tarball to the recovery directory, all we do is we do sudo space tar space hyphen x for extract, v for verbose, p for permissions, z for compression, f for file. We then give it the file name www.backup. Tar.gz. So this is a tar ball. We are recovering the information from hyphen uppercase C space forward slash recover. So we are we are recovering to the recover directory. And then all you do is you hit enter. Now being verbose, it is telling us all the stuff that it is now copying to that recover directory. So now that I've shown you how to do backups, uh, we'll show you how to schedule tasks. Like I say, the, the, the biggest task most people are worried about is scheduling backups. And so how you do this is you set up a cron job. Again, this is all very simple as long as you know what's going on. So you're going to type in the command in order to set up your cron jobs. You'll put in sudo, of course, space, and then you're going to type in cron tab, C-R-O-N-T-A-B, space, hyphen, E. This basically says that you're going to edit your cron tab file. Now when this first opens up the very first time it's going to ask you for your default text editor and you know since I taught you Vim I would suggest that you just do the Vim checkbox. It's like a little checkbox system. You don't have to type anything in. Um, if you know another text editor by all means put in another text editor. Basically this cron tab file is just a very 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 simple file so you don't really have to worry about it. Like I say, I like Vim, I use Vim, Vim works. So you put sudo space cron tab space hyphen E and the first time it opens up it'll ask you what your default editor is. Past that it will never ask you again. Now uh, when you open the file you're basically just looking at text file. Along the top you're going to notice there's M space H space uh, D-O-M space M space D O W space C O M M. Basically, these these first bits allow you to schedule. Again, remember Linux is just hanky about you know making it a pain in the butt. This is just just horrible. But you you'll understand. It's it's simple. It's just tedious and horrible. But this is how you schedule when the task is supposed to happen. And then after you schedule it, then you put in the command. So what, what is happening? So you would put in sudo space tar space hyphen c, blah, 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 you know, whatever the, the command you want to put in. So uh, with this, the big thing to remember is that uh, things start with zero. So when you have minutes, you can put in anywhere between zero to 59.
Hours, you can put in 0 to 23. This works off of what you would consider the military system or European cetera, system, etc. There's no AM, PM, 24 hour uh, schedule. So if you want 2 o'clock in the morning, you would put 2. If you want 2 o'clock in the afternoon, you would put 14. Day of month, this is 1 through 31. So do you want to ha have it happen on a specific day of the month? Like I want this to happen on the 15th or the 14th. Maybe if you had a payroll program that you wanted to trigger, you know, everybody gets paid on the, the 13th or something. Then you have month. So this is 1 through 12. Pretty simple. And then you have day of week. That's 0 through 6. In the Linux world, uh, the weekday starts on Sunday. So 0 is Sunday, 1 is Monday, 2 is Tuesday, etc. You can figure it out. Uh, and then you just type in the command. So if you don't care, um, so basically all you do is let's say you want something to happen 2.30 in the morning every Tuesday, right? What you would do is you would say, uh, so it's minutes, you would type in 30 space hours, it's 2 in the morning, so it would be 2. Day of the month, you don't care about the day of the month. This isn't about day of the month. So you would actually put in star. Star is asterisk, it means wild card, it means I don't care any. Month, again, you want this to happen every month, so you don't care. So you would put in star, again, any. So we said Tuesday, so then we go to day of week, and then we put in space two, and then after that there will be space, and then you type out the full command of whatever it is that you want to run. You know, sudo, and you put in the whole thing, so sudo tar hyphen c v uh, p, Etc. You put in the entire command. That's all you do to schedule. And again, you know, it's a little bit of mental work. You kind of have to sit there and do a little bit of the math. But so it's minutes. So like I said, we put 30 here to say the 30th minute. Hours, we put two here to say the second hour. So this is in the morning. Uh, day of the month, it doesn't matter. So we put in star. The month, it doesn't matter. So we put in star. The day of the week, we want this to happen every Tuesday. So we put two and then space the entire command. Um, if you do that, that's all you have to do to schedule a job. Now, uh, if you want to delete a job, all you do is you use sudo cron tab space hyphen e, you reopen the file, and you just delete that line of the file. That, that, that's all you have to do. Now again, you are going to be editing a text file using whatever editor, text editor, you have decided to use. Again, I have showed you Vim. You are going to have to understand how to use those text commands. So, you know, with Vim, you have to do A, and then if you want to save and quit, you do WQ, etc. If you don't understand how to use a text editor, then you gotta, gotta go back and learn how to use a text editor. Basically all this is is a text file. Again, you put in the minute, space, the hour, space, the day of the month, one through 31. So you could have this run every ninth. Uh, space, the month, one through 12. Space, day of the week. If you want this to happen every Tuesday, every Wednesday, every Friday. Remember what day of the week, Day start at zero, Sunday is zero, and then it goes up from there to six, and then space command. That's all you have to do to schedule jobs in Linux. So here we are, uh, back on the Ubuntu server. So what we're going to do is we're going to, to go into the cron tab file now to create a, a backup. So all you do again is sudo space cron tab space hyphen e. So basically cron tab edit. And then enter. Now, if this is your first time entering, uh, like I say, you'll you'll be given a selection of options for the different editors you can use. I would say you should use Vim because, of course, we've we've been using Vim. Now, uh, to to edit in Vim, I'll hit A, so I can now edit this file. Now, just to make life easy and show you how this all works, uh, I want this backup to happen every minute of every hour of every day of the month of every month of every day of the week. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do star for minute, so this means every minute, space star for every hour, space star for every day of the month, space star for every month, space star for every day of the week. This just makes my life easier trying to show you guys. When you're sitting down to figure out your backup schedule, obviously, I would suggest you only do it once a day, once a week, etc. So once you've plugged in, uh, you know, 
what the schedule is. You then do space and then you do the command that you want run. So we'll do sudo space tar. So this is going to be a backup hyphen and then we do C. Now I'm not going to put in V because this is an automatic thing so I don't want it to be verbose. So I'll do P for permissions, preserve permissions, Z for compression, F for create a file. Then I created a backup folder so I want to put this into the backup folder. So there's a backup folder uh, under the root directory and then I'll do forward slash and then I will create the name for this particular backup. So I'll call it minute backup dot tar dot gz. So the name is minute backup. Uh, it's a tar ball. You then do space. Uh, I'm not going to exclude anything right now just to make life easier. Uh, and then I say what I want to back up. So I'm going to back up the WP content directory uh, for my WordPress site. For whatever reason, let's just say that it needs to get backed up every minute. So sudo tar cpz yada yada, you know the command. So basically the front part of this is the scheduling. Like I say, you kind of have to do the math on it. Uh, then after that you just plug in the, the normal command that, that you would type in. When you are done, of course you hit escape to get out of the insert mode. Then you do uh, colon wq is basically save and quit. And now uh, that has created the new schedule. So every minute it's going to create that backup file. Again, with, with the, the whole cron process, the server checks the, the cron tab file every minute. So, uh, so, so basically in a minute or two, uh, we, we should have a new file. So I'm going to change directory to the backup folder. So we're now in the backup folder. And if I do LSL... Oh, look, the minute backup has already been created. So that is all you have to do to set up scheduled tasks uh, with the cron tab file. Again, it's sudo cron tab space hyphen E. Then when you go in, like I say, the first part is scheduling. And like I say, it's a little bit of a bugger, but you figure out how many months and days and all that. And then you just put in the full command. So if you're doing a backup like I did, uh, you just you just put in the normal tar command and that's, that's all you have to do. So with that, let's go back out to uh, the real world and have some final thoughts. So that's all there is to, to backing up your, your Linux server or recovering files using tar and then for scheduling tasks using uh, cron jobs. Uh, I won't go through back you know every single thing I showed you because this this was a lot of commands that we had to type in. So uh, the main thing that I would just remind you is when you are creating tar balls or when you're extracting from tar files, the only argument that I wouldn't use is that V, that lowercase V that is for verbose to tell you what's going on. Everything else I would put in there, you know, the, the C and the, the permissions and the, the create the file and the Z. Remember that Z allows you to compress or decompress uh, that, that, that tar file that you're creating. If you compress a tar file that goes from being a tar file to being a tar ball, that's what a tar ball is, a compressed tar file. Just remember that when you create the backup file, uh, there is, um, you can name it whatever you want, you can name it Bob for, uh, for all Linux cares, but just so you know what's going on, I would use that .tar .gz at the end. And I would put in the date and time just so you know what's going on. Uh, I showed you how to, uh, to, to, to create schedule tasks using the cron jobs. Again, it's very easy. You just sudo space cron tab hyphen E. Like I say, the first time you open it up, it's going to ask you for the default text editor. Remember, editing text in Linux is not like editing text in Notepad. So choose whatever text editor you know how to use. Um, it will just make your life a, a whole lot easier. You know, previously I've shown you how to use Vim. So once you do that hyphen E, it'll open up and, uh, and then you've got to understand the, the text editor commands in order to be able to save and quit and do all that kind of stuff. Uh, the, you know, when you're, when you're typing in the whole scheduling command, remember the first bit, uh, the, the, the minute, the hour, the day of month, the, the month, 
the day of week, all of that is for the scheduling component. So that's, do you want this to happen every Tuesday at midnight? Do you want to have, to have this happen every minute? You can have things run every minute, every hour, etc. The first five parts are all scheduling, and then the final part is simply the command. So you type out the whole command and arguments and everything just like you would normally run if you were sitting down at that little cursor, if you're sitting down at the command line interface. Uh, you do that, you, uh, if you're using Vim, you do you know, colon WQ, you save the file, and, uh, and, and then it'll just, it'll just work like a champ. Uh, cron jobs, basically what happens is every minute the server checks that cron, cron tab folder or file, and uh, if it sees that there's a cron job to run, it will just run it right then and there. That's all there is for, for scheduling tasks. So that was, that was backing up your system, your Linux system, using tar and scheduling tasks uh, using cron. I think it's fairly easy, uh, you know, when, once, you, once you understand what's supposed to be going on. As you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy over here for Everyman IT. I had fun uh, teaching this class and look forward to seeing you at the next one.